dairy has a long history of showing up in popular films. In all fairness, many foods are integrated in film. But dairy isn't just any food. It's a food category with tons of political power and marketing money behind it. And it's a food that's most often pushed onto the public in a way that's least understood by the public. So is there more to dairy references in film other than just character choice and plot line? In this video, we're going to go in depth on a few specific examples of films that seem to me to have a clear agenda to promote dairy to viewers. I'm going to make my case as to why I think this is. Then we'll check in with an expert on the topic to try and ascertain if there's any merit to my theories. We'll also talk about transparency, as well as the symbolism of dairy in movies and other potential motivations to include it. And I want to mention if you're confused when I mention things like the dairy industry and how they push dairy onto the public, and phrases I'll be using like the Dairy Checkoff or Dairy Management Inc., I would recommend checking out either my Aubrey Plaza Got Milk video or my interview with Dr. Barnard from last week. But they're all basically referring to the dairy industry in the United States government-backed marketing power. Without further ado, let's get right into it, starting with everyone's favorite holiday film, Home Alone, which is obviously a cinematic classic and holiday staple in most people's homes. It's an incredibly charming and well-executed film in so many ways, and in my opinion, it really stands the test of time 34 years later. But something stood out to me over these past few Christmases as we did our annual rewatch, and that is the honestly pretty insane number of dairy references throughout. I'm going to take us through all of them, starting at the beginning. Of course, we have the open opening scene revolving around 10 pizzas being delivered as the McAllisters get ready for their trip to Paris. You have the McAllisters then eating the pizza. The mom comes into the kitchen and says, I hope you're all drinking milk. I want to get rid of it. Presumably she wants to get rid of it because they're going out of town the next day. We then have Kevin coming in asking, didn't anyone order me a plain cheese? His brother then teases him about how there's no cheese pizza left. Kevin in response, attacks his brother, which causes the milk to spill all over the passports and plane tickets. Everyone helps clean up the milk, and this is something I actually didn't catch until the other day. I hadn't even clocked this as a dairy reference initially. As the dad throws some milky napkins in the trash, there is a can of Ready Whip in the trash. We also, of course, see that Kevin's plane ticket has accidentally been thrown away, so milk and the milk spilling really is a major part of the plot of the movie. We then have Kevin yell at the pizza delivery guy for not bringing enough cheese pizza. A bit later, we have Kevin eating a comically large bowl of ice cream while watching a movie. This scene is meant to represent Kevin rebelling, doing all the things a kid would dream of doing if their parents weren't around. In this case, watching a violent movie and eating junk food. Speaking of junk food, we do have prominently on display here uh, Pepsi and Frito-Lay chips. I think it's safe to say that these were clear product placements for those two companies, so the mind does wonder if this was an obvious place to also have a dairy integration. Later, Kevin orders a pizza for himself and says the line, a lovely cheese pizza just for me. He goes to the store to buy groceries and there's a specific shot of him grabbing a gallon of milk from the dairy fridge. And although he buys a number of other things, that's the only item there's a specific shot of him picking up. And it leaves me to wonder why. Like, why the milk specifically? Why not the detergent or the paper towels? As he's Checking out, we also see that he buys Kraft frozen mac and cheese. There's a clear shot of it on the belt. Uh, we also have some other possible product placements here, like Tide, Wonder Bread, and Tropicana. Later, Kevin makes the microwavable mac and cheese and sits down to eat it with a huge glass of milk. Not only does he sit down to the mac and cheese and the milk, but he also says, bless this highly nutritious microwavable macaroni and cheese dinner. That particular line sounded like a blatant ad. They've got the setup of him buying it, exactly what product he's buying, they've got him making it, showing how easy it is to make, and then they've got him touting its nutritional benefits. Now what are those nutritional benefits? 
I'm not exactly sure. At the end of the movie, when Kevin's reunited with his family, his mom says, someone has to find an open store. We don't even have milk here. To which Kevin replies, I went shopping yesterday. I got milk, eggs, and fabric softener. Those are all the dairy references they managed to stuff in the movie. Honestly, I kept thinking I had found them all and then finding more. So there, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple more that I didn't catch. Of course, in Home Alone 2, we have even more dairy references. Kevin has an even more ludicrous ice cream party. There's also an infamous pizza scene in the limo. All in all, in Home Alone 1, there are about 15 different dairy moments, which feels like a lot in an hour and 38 minute film. One might say these are just kid foods. They're reflective of the time. Kids love mac and cheese and pizza. But then it kind of gets into the conversation of why do kids love these foods so much? Do they just naturally love them? Or are they guided to love them? I remember growing up with Kraft Mac and Cheese, there were always fun pasta shapes clearly targeted at kids. And today Kraft has partnerships with SpongeBob, Paw Patrol, they have unicorn shapes and many, many more. And obviously many foods aimed at kids will have fun shapes and colors and packaging. But I do remember from my childhood Kraft Mac and Cheese really feeling like it was specifically aimed at kids. Also in the movie, the number of fluid milk references, the mom clearly establishing that milk is a household essential to the point where she's ready to go out in a snowstorm on Christmas Day to find some, and the fact that we not only have so many dairy references, but so many different iterations of dairy, pizza, milk, ice cream, mac and cheese. It really feels like they're covering all their bases in terms of showcasing different forms of dairy. Unfortunately, there's no way of knowing for sure, but we do know that the film struggled with funding and had some budget issues. There are conflicting reports as to exact numbers, but from all accounts, the film did end up getting shut down by Warner Brothers for going over budget before getting picked up by 20th Century Fox. It was a relatively low budget film, and from the product placements, it seems clear that they did take money, at least from certain companies. So what are the odds they also took money from the dairy checkoff? That is something I'm going to ask my expert about, but first I want to fast forward the clock, 33 years, to a little film called Barbie. Although filmed decades later than Home Alone, there was a big moment that stood out to me that may have stood out to some of you as well. It happens in the opening sequence of the movie where we have Barbie waking up in her Barbie dream house and going about her daily routine. She takes a fake shower and gets dressed. It's kind of this weird pseudo reality where everything she does is not real, but also meant to be real within the context of her world. She goes to the kitchen where she grabs a carton out of the fridge and we don't quite see what it is yet. She goes over to the window waves to her friends, and then she goes to the toaster and stands there, still holding the carton, and a heart-shaped waffle pops out of the toaster onto her plate, and some type of dollop of cream lands on top. And there's a moment where she's standing, kind of posing with the carton and the waffle and cream, where we can now clearly see that the carton says cow milk on it. And notably, the word cow is a bigger size and a bolder, darker color than the word milk, so it definitely stands out more against the light blue background. After the posing moment, she carries her breakfast over to the table where she pours herself a pretend whole glass of milk, then picks it up, and there's a close-up of her taking a long drink and then smiling, apparently, from how much she enjoyed her pretend cow milk. She then fake eats her waffle, dabs her mouth, and stands up. This whole time, the carton of cow milk is still very much in frame. The whole sequence from when she first grabs the milk to when she gets up from the table lasts 35 seconds, which in a sequence that's only 2 minutes and 26 seconds kind of stands out. It's by far the longest she spends on any of the activities in the opening. Obviously, the carton explicitly saying cow milk as opposed to just milk is what stood out to me here. So we're meant to believe that the notoriously unrealistically proportioned Barbie drinks a full glass of cow's milk and a waffle with what looks like some type of heavy cream for breakfast. This decision especially stands out with a character positioned as going on a 
feminist journey throughout the movie and discovering concepts like misogyny and the patriarchy. So this character drinking cow milk stands out considering the dairy industry exploits female bodies and reproductive systems as standard practice. I imagine some might argue, well, maybe it's making a statement, like Barbie's stuck in time so she still drinks cow's milk or something like that. I don't buy that theory because if that were the case, then we would have some type of resolution later in the movie, right? Maybe we'd have a moment where she does start drinking oat milk instead which never happens. This whole breakfast scene seemed like it just served to promote dairy. There's a number of other things she could have consumed, like cereal or orange juice or coffee. There has been this push in dairy marketing over the last few years to make a strong association between drinking cow's milk and hot girls, for lack of a better term. Emily Ratajkowski and Hailey Bieber both did sponsored milk Instagram posts. Emma Roberts also did a sponsored video. The Barbie movie really represents, in many ways, the type of marketing we've seen the dairy industry do over the last few years. Partnering with actresses, partnering with it girls, trying to appeal to Gen Z. I did some research on this, and while there's nothing explicitly confirming anything, I did find a lot of interesting stuff. Weirdly, I found this article that states a skin expert had Margot Robbie drink milk thistle tea and a fermented milk drink to give her glowing skin for the movie. Obviously milk thistle tea doesn't actually have milk in it. I just thought that was a strange coincidence. I found this tweet from an account called The Food Professor. Just watched the Barbie movie with my wife and three daughters. Noticed Barbie drinking cow's milk, maybe a product placement? Not sure if it's true, but they say it's encouraging more milk consumption. So interesting. Now when he says they, I'm not exactly sure if he's referring to his wife and daughters or if he's referring to some other they. Uh, it's unclear. These were some of the responses. To actually say cow milk seems like sarcasm to me. I'm not sure what the sarcasm would be here. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Someone else said maybe it's to help the farmers of Wisconsin. This person's onto something. If it was, it's brilliant. Not really sure what's brilliant about product placement in a movie. It's a practice that's been around for the better part of a century. Not sure what's so brilliant about it. Someone else said, I think most things in the set were just based on the actual toys. I'm pretty sure I had a similar milk carton. Speaking of that, let's talk about the toys. There seem to be a few different iterations of the official Mattel milk prop for the Barbie dream house. In some iterations, there is a picture of a cow, but not in every iteration. And it doesn't say the word cow on any of them. Now, is it possible that the prop designers took a look at a few of these and made an artistic decision to to translate a picture of a cow to the word cow? Sure, that's possible. I would like to point out though that when some of these toys were made, this one being from the 1970s, cow would have been pretty much the only type of milk available. So putting a picture of a cow wouldn't have made as much of a statement. It would have more been a literal design choice, like putting a picture of an orange on a carton of orange juice. But in 2023, when you have two thirds of Americans having tried milk alternatives and a growing number of people buying plant milk with a declining number of people buying cow's milk, writing cow in big bold letters definitely makes a statement. I truly believe this was random, but what a coincidence. This article from PR Daily mentions the Barbie poster and getting Gen Z to drink more milk in the same headline. I also found this tweet showing a picture of a cow milk water bottle that mimics the prop from the movie. It also shows a mug. This person asks, is cow milk this important to the movie that there's at least two separate items of merch referencing it? Doing some research, it seems that the mug was not an officially licensed product, but the water bottle definitely was, although it was a bit hard to find. I did a little poking around and found this Instagram post showing an official Barbie merch display at a store in a mall. And you can see the cow milk water bottles are part of that display. I also found a few being sold on Poshmark. Interestingly, this mall is in the Philippines. There's also a listing selling one on a Malaysian resale website. So it seems these may have only been sold in certain countries. They're definitely not on the official US Barbie movie merch website, but they were definitely official Mattel merch. Possibly even weirder is that there was 
also a soy drink version, this tweet points out. Indeed, I found evidence of one on Poshmark. Apparently there was also an oat drink version. There's also this t-shirt that is sold in the US with all three drink containers on the front of it. I have to ask, who would buy this? Like, who is this meant for? Who was this made for? That's what this that's what the song should have been. I also have to point out that although they do have plant milk versions, they don't call them milk, they call them drink. Even though the USDA ruled in February 2023 that plant milks are allowed to be called milk. So why would they do that for the merch? Why would they say soy drink and oat drink? Could it possibly be to appease a sponsor of the movie? Maybe. I'm pretty sure the only parties complaining about plant milk being called milk are dairy organizations. Perhaps the most interesting thing this tweet called attention to is the fact that there was a Got Milk Barbie in 1995. She's wearing cow print overalls, there's chocolate chip cookies on the box, and it even comes with a special straw for sipping in style. As we know, Got Milk is paid for by the California Milk Processor Board, which is a dairy checkoff program, and we now know that Mattel had a relationship with them at one point. We also know the Barbie movie was filmed partially in LA, so is it such a huge leap to imagine that the California Milk Processor Board, which is administered by the California government, made some type of deal or gave some type of filming incentive to the Barbie production? I don't think so. We do know that there was product placement in the film. In fact, essentially the entire film was product placement for Mattel, um, but beyond that, there were a few other placements. Whether or not this was product placement, I now wanna talk about the symbolism of milk being used in film. There have been lots of think pieces about what milk represents in film. This YouTube video makes some really interesting points. Milk is generally considered a symbol of purity and wholesomeness as it represents babies childhood, and maternalism. Interestingly, there's a common trope of villains drinking milk in movies. As some of these analyses point out, there's something particularly unsettling about a grown man drinking milk. I also wonder if milk carries this symbolism, does that translate to other dairy products? Like do cheese and ice cream, for example, have the same symbolism? In the case of the Barbie movie, her drinking milk could have been a representation of her innocence and naivete, but then again, wouldn't the carton just saying milk have sufficed? So many questions, we need some answers. So now I wanna shift to my conversation with my expert. And who better to ask about this than Dr. Barnard? This question and this topic was one of the big reasons I wanted to interview him. I figured if anyone knew anything about this, it would be him. So I cut this part out of my interview with him because I wanted to save it for this video. I was pretty surprised by how he answered the question. So let's hear what he had to say. I have wondered, like, is that a thing that happens? It doesn't seem that far-fetched to me that the dairy checkoff may work with uh, film and TV productions to try to integrate dairy into the script and plot lines. Um, do you have any awareness of that? Of course. So. The, the film studios are always looking for money, and they are not going to let a 90-minute film go by without figuring out what they can sell or something like that. So let's say there's a chase scene and you've got a car and you can have an Audi symbol um, or whatever right. it is that's visible, that is money in the bank. Yeah. Now, different uh, production studios deal with this in different ways, but your instincts are right. When you see a product that is clearly getting a promotion, you can just smell the dollars coming out mm -hmm. of the screen. Right. Um, and uh, on the other side of the, of the bargaining table, the dairy industry, these are not foolish people. They have a lot of resources and they are working very hard to get these products in front of the demographics. And the other piece of this is there, there's a reason why the dairy industry has concentrated on children. They don't say, okay, you're 75 and you could have a hip fracture any day, drink a lot of milk. I mean, they might say that, but what they want to say is something that will build them a customer for life. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, you're seven years old. Now is the time when you have to build your skeleton so that it's as strong as possible. So that when you start losing bone mass, which there's, a lot of um, a lot of problems with that logic, but they are trying to build customers early in life so that the idea of milk and cookies is what you want and what you remember. And that's what they are are doing. And there, and by the way, there is no disclosure. You know, you can yeah. watch the, the credits 16 times. Yes. And, and, and you would say, wouldn't it be nice if they would tell you it was product placement? Yeah. Um, they don't they don't disclose that at all. 
So you think that is for or for sure something that happens? Constantly. Um, they, yeah. they are they are always looking for celebrities, for opportunities, because first of all, they, they do it anyway. But secondly, they're losing. They, they're, they, they have for a generation been losing customers. Um, they're losing customers to bottled water. They're losing customers to soda. And now look at the dairy case. The dairy case is not your mm -hmm. grandmother's dairy case. There's almond milk. There is oat milk, there is soy milk, rice milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, and it's pushing the cow's milk out. So cow's milk consumption is falling and falling and falling. They're more desperate than ever. So there, there are two ways of dealing with it. Our number one, huge marketing to try to push back. Mm -hmm. And secondly, turn it into cheese. Right. Um, so you can sell the cheese where you couldn't sell the milk. My conversation with Dr. Barnard certainly convinced me that none of this is outside of the realm of possibility. Honestly, I imagined a world in which he was like, yeah, no, you're grasping at straws here, like there's nothing there. In which case I honestly probably would have questioned making this video at all. But instead he seemed 100% sure that this happens. However, it seems like unfortunately we're not going to get any actual evidence unless we were able to get inside the studios where these deals are made. But again, going back to if there is a close-up shot of an Audi or a bottle of Pepsi, there's no mistaking that we're being advertised to and also who is advertising to us. Whereas if we see a generic phrase like cow milk or someone ordering a pizza from a made-up pizza place, 99.99% .99 of the population aren't going to think twice about that, although they are likely to be influenced by it. I always think of a TikTok comment from the Aubrey Plaza Got milk ad where someone said something about the dairy industry and someone replied, bro, the dairy industry? What's next? The chair industry? People really do think of milk as as generic a concept as a chair or, you know, water or soda pop. They don't think of it as a product that gets marketed. But the reality is dairy and the dairy industry are as much commodities and operate in as similar ways in terms of financial and marketing power as many corporations do, although they aren't technically a corporation. This was an interesting response to the food professor tweet I read earlier. Milk is symbolic. It's a symbol of purity and wholesomeness. If it was just a product placement, then the dairy farmers would have found a way to get their logo in there. This represents what so many people don't understand. They did get their logo in there. That was it. You saw it. Generic milk is the product. Generic dairy is the logo. It's not one specific dairy farm or producer paying for it. It's all of them. That's how the checkoff program works. And I'd argue in terms of marketing, this vagueness behooves them. No pun intended, Jesus Christ. Because what are people more likely to go for? A blatant in-your-face product placement or a subtle suggestion associated with someone they look up to and want to emulate. Another point Dr. Barnard made that hadn't even occurred to me was the connection with children. Both of these two films I mentioned being primarily children's films. There is another children's franchise that had been top of mind for me when thinking about this video, and that was the Ninja Turtles. Those familiar with the franchise know that one of the Ninja Turtles' main character traits is their obsession with pizza. I found this video on IGN in which the hosts do an incredible deep dive on pizza in the Ninja Turtles universe. Ninja Turtles started out as a comic, and according to the hosts, the turtles didn't eat a ton of pizza in the original comics. That was something that was more added for the cartoon and film versions. The 1989 TV show is where we really start to see them eating a lot of pizza. In 1990, there's a Ninja Turtles arcade game that actually has Pizza Hut ads in the game that are part of the game, and you also have pizza power-ups that give you health. When you bought the Ninja Turtles 2 arcade game, you would get a coupon for a free personal pan pizza at Pizza Hut. In the 1990 movie, we actually have a clear Domino's product placement at the beginning of the movie. They even work in the slogan, never pay full price for late pizza. But weirdly, when the movie came to VHS, the VHS came with a coupon for Pizza Hut. So <laughs> the franchise kind of seemed to be two-timing these two pizza behemoths. The franchise also ended up doing various frozen pizza lines. They still sell versions of those today. The timing of all of this really stands out to me. 
the Ninja Turtles TV show in 1989, Ninja Turtles movie in 1990, Home Alone in 1990. I will point out that the Dairy Production Stabilization Act of 1983 was the inception of the modern day dairy checkoff program. So hypothetically by 1989, 1990, they're really up and running and using that checkoff money for promotional purposes. We also know that Dairy Management Inc, which was formed in 1995, has worked with Pizza Hut many times. In terms of transparency, this Ninja Turtles partnership with Pizza Hut and Domino's was clearly pretty transparent. But in terms of the ethics of marketing such an unhealthy food to children, I think the impact of this really can't be understated. My boyfriend has had a lifelong love affair with pizza. It was by far the most painful thing for him to give up going vegan because he really has this core foundational positive childhood association with pizza. And in my opinion, it's no small coincidence that two of his all-time favorite movies are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Home Alone. Do I believe every single dairy reference in TV and film is a dairy ad? No, I don't. But I want to explain a key difference that really stands out to me. To me, it comes down to the way the dairy is integrated in the film, and if it seems to serve the characters and the plot in an organic way, or if it just seems kind of random and out of place. In Home Alone, I could buy that a kid left alone for a few days would go to his comforting favorites that are easy to make or easy to order, but the sheer amount of references in the film is what stands out as suspicious. And also, so did it need to be milk? Like, did milk need to be the thing that was spilled all over the passports, or could it have been iced tea or soda? Did it have to be milk that he's shown grabbing in the grocery store, or could it have been orange juice? And in Barbie, I can't really think of why in 2023 Barbie would be drinking a full glass of cow's milk for breakfast, and why that had to be such a long part of the opening sequence. But there are other films where I buy the integration much more. The video I mentioned earlier references is a scene in Catch Me If You Can, in which a 16-year-old Frank pretends to be a pilot. After he's settled in the cockpit, a flight attendant asks if you want something to drink, and he says, milk. This serves as a comical, eyebrow-raising moment, and in this context, I believe it was meant to show a youthful innocence underneath the master manipulator facade. Whether or not I believe that cow's milk should be used to represent youth and innocence, I can certainly see that in this case, there was a clear motivation to include it. In closing, I personally find it mind-boggling that none of this has to be disclosed to the public. Dr. Barnard seemed to have more of a this is just the way it is attitude about the whole thing. Maybe he knows there's little chance of this ever changing, but that's why I like to talk about it so much because like I said before, it's one of the things that's most pushed onto the general public that most of the general public has no idea about. So let me know your thoughts on all of this. I know there's there's probably hundreds more examples, so I'd love to hear your observations on the topic. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it entertaining and informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe for more of my videos, tap the bell to be notified when I upload, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!